Elaine Maxwell, the business associate, paramour, and madam for Jeffrey Epstein, has just been sentenced to 20 years in prison. But I got to tell you what, something tells me she's not going to serve her entire term, her entire sentence. No, I, I don't think that Ghislaine Maxwell is going to be in prison for 20 years. I think she's probably, I, I think it's going to be shorter. And I don't think it's going to be shorter because of parole, unless parole is the new nickname that we're giving to Hillary Clinton. I don't think so. I think that, uh, you know, you're going to see a FedEx truck pull up. You're going to see some kind of shadowy figure in a, in a nice purple pantsuit with Groucho glasses on and a big thick mustache walking in there, kind of bulging at the hips. And then the cameras are going to go out. And then the guards are going to fall asleep. And then it's just me and you, Ghislaine. It's, that's, that's right. It's old hill dog again. You thought you were through with me, Ghislaine? I don't think so. Uh-uh. No, Hillary, no, please. Hillary, I'll do anything. That's, no, I'm, I'm possibly joking. I'm not quite sure. But I don't think she's going to serve her whole term. Uh, they already put her on suicide watch even though her attorney says she is not suicidal. Another psychologist who examined her said she is not suicidal. Uh, that's, that's ominous that they would put her on suicide watch already. Maybe she makes it. I don't know that she'll be assassinated or kill herself or whatever. Uh, but the, the entire process has been really, really weird. All the way b- back to the first prosecution and investigation of Jeffrey Epstein, where he got this ridiculous sweetheart deal down in Palm Beach because the U.S. attorney heard from his higher-ups that Epstein belonged to intelligence. That's the, that's the uh, testimony of Alex Acosta when he was up for labor secretary, but he had been U.S. attorney down there in Florida. Uh, then uh, Epstein basically was just checking in at the, at the county jail in Palm Beach, and then he was going about living his life perfectly fine. Then he, finally, there was too much of a media storm. He does get arrested, and he winds up dead in prison because just all those cameras malfunction and the lights and the guards and whoopsie daisy, what, what can you say? That's too bad. Th- these people who have the uh, blackmail, the extremist form of blackmail on the most powerful people in the world, then all of a sudden you get the arrest of Ghislaine Maxwell. And yet we haven't seen very much from the trial. We haven't heard very much from the trial. And most importantly, we don't know who's in the book. That's all I care about. I don't care if Ghislaine Maxwell serves her sentence. I don't, I don't really care about Ghislaine Maxwell at all. I don't really care about Jeffrey Epstein at all. I want to know about the operation. I want to know who was funding the operation. Jeffrey Epstein had a lot of money and no one really seems able to, to explain where the money came from. Were there other backers? Were there other private backers? Were there state backers? What does it mean that he belonged to intelligence? That's kind of weird. And then, here's what I really want to know, before Ghislaine puts on the orange jumpsuit and waits for Hillary to come and knock it, who's in the book? Who's in the book? Who are the clients? Who went, who was going to the island? What did they do? When did they go? How many times were they on the airplane? That's what I want to know. And yet that's the only information we can't seem to find. And everybody seems in on it. The federal investigators, the prosecutors, that everybody seemed, the media for that matter. Why don't we know who is in that book? We got her. We got her. She's in the orange jumpsuit. She's just been sentenced. Why are they closing the book? Why is there some sweetheart deal here that keeps all of these clients out of the media spotlight? It, it, the reason, I, I'm making some jokes about Hillary Clinton here. The reason that people are making those jokes and not jokes is because we don't have any trust in the elite because this case in particular and so many others are so obviously crooked and corrupt. That's why, because we don't think that we can believe the federal government. We don't think that we can believe the justice system. We don't, we don't have any respect for these shadowy elites and not so shadowy elites, for fairly public figures who were showing up to the island getting weird massages from the little girls. That's why. And this is what, because we don't have respect for these institutions anymore, because they've squandered their credibility, we're all expecting Ghislaine Maxwell to, to be suicided. How, how many of you out there you're thinking right now, you're listening to this show, if Ghislaine Maxwell turned up dead tomorrow, one, would you be surprised? Two, do you think she would have killed herself? I bet the majority of people would say, yeah, she might turn up dead. And no, I don't think it would, I think she would be assassinated. There was the weird death of John McAfee the eccentric libertarian 
a gazillionaire behind the, the software bearing his own name. Remember, he said, I'm not, I'm not suicidal. I'm not going to kill myself. People are trying to kill me. I might wind up dead in a prison. And what happened? He wound up dead in a prison. He even had a tattoo that said whacked. Jeffrey Epstein. No one thinks that Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. Very few people do. Why do we think this stuff happens? There have been weird cases. There's one case, I don't know if you've seen this, it's gotten a little bit of reporting in the mainstream media, but it's a strange one, the case of Michael Hastings. You ever hear about this one? This was a few years ago now. Uh, Michael Hastings was a journalist who was working on some stories about the deep state, about the alphabet letter agencies and the the, uh, secret workings of the federal government at home and abroad. And he began to think that he was being tracked and he began to think that he was being surveilled and he began to think that people were coming after him. And then he wound up dead of a really weird car crash. And it, it, the, this car crash didn't just raise the eyebrows of the tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist kooks. It raised the eyebrows of very well-respected and credentialed national security officials. The former U.S. National Coordinator for Security, Infrastructure, Protection, and Counterterrorism, Richard Clark, said that what is known about the crash is, quote, consistent with a car cyber attack. He was quoted as saying, there is reason to believe that intelligence agencies for major powers, including the United States, know how to remotely seize control of a car. So if there were a cyber attack on Hastings' car, and I'm not saying there was, I think whoever did it would probably get away with it. That's kind of spooky stuff that the governments could do that and that people believe that they would have done that. Now, other people around this journalist, Michael Hastings, said, well, he was being erratic. He, was, he, he had other problems. I don't know. Maybe he did just kill himself. And maybe he did. I don't know. I don't, I don't know very much about this case at all. That, that's actually sort of the, whether he was assassinated or not is almost beside the point. The, the, the more important point for all of us is the erosion of trust that we have in our established institutions. We think that these, these institutions could do these kinds of things. And so we allow Jeffrey Epstein died. Okay, well, he didn't kill himself. Oh, Ghislaine Maxwell's on suicide watch. Here we go. Set your clocks. Here we go. That that speaks to a corrupt elite, an elite that is now so mired in lies and wickedness and ugliness and all the stuff that we don't want in society that the society has become unrecognizable. If you enjoyed that clip from the Michael Knowles show, and I I know that you did. I trust that you did. Check out the rest on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And most importantly of all, here's what we need. We need you to become a member at The Daily Wire, okay? Dailywire.com slash Knowles. You'll get access to a library of exclusive content. You can use code Knowles, save 25% on your new membership today. You will help us fight this fight. We have racked up some pretty big wins here at DW specifically and on the conservative side. Uh, We can only do it when you put your money where our mouths are. So we really appreciate your support. Right now, dailywire.com slash Knowles, save 25%. 